Hey everybody, let me share a really cool concept with you using generative fill in Adobe Photoshop to create an oil painting. This one is awesome. I'm really having fun with this. Are we ready for this? Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to helping you think out of the box creatively as a photographer and as a photo artist. Now, before I get into the program today, I gotta get some housekeeping out of the way. For, I would love to thank the people that um, volunteered to uh, buy, use Buy Me A Coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist to help support this channel. Again, it's just on a volunteer basis whenever you feel like Again, uh, you know, buying the coffee. Uh, it just helps support this because, again, I'm not monetized on this. Uh, it takes a lot of effort and time to put together the material on a weekly basis for you guys. So I'd like to thank the ones that did that for me uh, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, thank you again. Uh, next thing is emails. Uh, I'm getting a little bit backlog on emails. And uh, my email address should be here at the very bottom. So if you have some questions, issues you'd like to talk about, uh, suggestions for future um, videos, uh, please email me personally at stephenphotoartist uh, at gmail.com. And I tend to respond to those than I do if you make comments on the, the YouTube channel. Um, also, um, I've been getting this a lot, and I think I'm going to do this on the next video. Steve, why did you choose to use Canon as your camera of choice? And you may not like the answer I'm going to give. Uh, I'll go into detail, but let's wait till next week. Uh, but I'm, for some reason, I'm getting hit on that a lot lately. So I promise I will cover that uh, next week. Okay, so let's dive into today's program. And that is, um, oh, by the way, uh, if you could do me a favor again, and that is like this uh, video. Uh, every time you watch a video, it just helps with the algorithm to push this out to other people who have the same interest and also uh, subscribe if you have not subscribed and hit that notification bell. All right, let's talk about this really cool technique called oil painting using Adobe Photoshop, but using that feature generative fill using AI. And uh, let's dive right into Photoshop right now. Uh, with this open, and by the way, um, I'm getting comments on this again. How am I getting the open dialog box really fast? Am I using a shortcut keystroke? And the answer is no. Uh, I've been doing this for like 25 years. And that is if you just double click anywhere on your workspace area, it automatically opens up your open dialog box. And again, just navigate uh, to find the image you're going to work with. So today we're going to work with this image right here and select that to open up in Photoshop. Now to set this up, here's what we have to do. Uh, number one, I'm assuming that the uh, generative fill option is available to you. Uh, if not, if you go to Windows drop down menu, come all the way down to the bottom, you'll see contextual task bar that should be activated. And I pinned mine over here at the very top of my status bar. So it's easily accessible for me. And the next thing is we're going to work in something called channels. And before I get into channels, by the way, is over here. Uh, typically, you have like libraries, paths, and then channels. So I'm going to change this to channels over here so we can see this. But I just want to show you that if I duplicate my layer, and to do that, I'm just doing the shortcut Control J. That's Command J in a Mac. And I just want to do a before and after with this. If I select, so I can grab my selection tool here in the toolbar, if you wish, to do a click and drag motion. I can do Control A to select that region. It doesn't matter. Um, but once I have that selection made, if I go to the generative fill feature right here, so again, I have this on my status bar at the very top, and type in oil painting. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, because I'm going to do this a few times, I just want to save time typing. So I'm going to highlight this. Control C, Command C on a Mac to copy that. And then I'm just going to choose to generate. And watch what happens when I choose generate. Now, again, this will take a few seconds. 
but um, I would just get some random brush strokes. And obviously, this is not what we want, but I just need to show you uh, what's going to happen with a generative fill if I type in oil painting. So I'll let that render out, and you'll see a hodgepodge of, you know, just paint strokes. So that's one. That's one. Oh, interesting. <laughs> How it came up with that, I have no idea. And then there's that one. So again, just a hodgepodge, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to uh, delete that. Okay, so here's the technique, and it's very important you follow the steps exact. Okay, so number one, uh, I come down to channels. That's the first thing to do. And then I'm going to come down to the very bottom of the panel here, and I'm going to add a new channel. So I'm going to click on this to create a new channel, and by default, it'll be uh, an alpha channel, which is fine. You don't really have to rename that or anything. And it comes in as black. So here's uh, the technique. Come over here to your toolbar toward the bottom and click on the black swatch there to open up the color picker. And what you do is you come over here where you see B for brightness, change that to 50%. And then click on OK to accept that. Now, to change my swatch over here in the toolbar to 50%, I need to fill that here in the alpha channel. So what you do is make sure the alpha channel is selected. I'll do Control-Delete on the keyboard, and it fills that in. That should be Option-Delete on a Mac, by the way. And with that selected, the next thing I have to do, it's very important, is don't do control A to select everything. I don't know why that doesn't work. Maybe it will in the future, but I have to do control click on the alpha channel to make that selection. So control click, that should be, um, I think it's option click in a Mac. Um, yeah, I think it's option click in a Mac. I may be wrong on that, but uh, uh, I'm gonna choose this at the very top. And now I'm gonna go to generative fill and type in, in this case, I'm just going to paste oil painting and choose generate. And let that generate out. By the way, it should be a command click. I think I said option click. Control option. <laughs> I'm losing it, people. Um, hey. Live video, I'm making mistakes. So Alt, Option, Control, uh, the Command. So Command, click on the Mac uh, on the Alpha channel. So uh, hopefully I can remember that next time. Anyhow, um, very abstract. Okay, so this may not be what you want, but I'm going to look at my three options. You can regenerate this again if you want. So I'm just going to choose the first one. Let's say I like that one. Okay, um, but this is not the end. Uh, I'm going to come back to this later. I'm going to turn off that layer by selecting the eyeball and I'm going to click on this layer again and I'm going to regenerate this again but I'm going to modify this. I'm going to come down to channels again. I'm going to be on the alpha channel. I'm going to click over here on the left side again to grab my color picker off that swatch and I'm going to change the 50% to 30%. Click on OK and I'm going to alt click on this, or not Alt-click, but just select that, and I'm going to do Alt-delete, I should say. I'm having a rough day, people. <laughs> so um, that would be Alt, that should be Option on a Mac, Delete, so Option, Delete on a Mac, to fill in that color. And now, again, I'm going to do Control-click. I'll get a warning when that when it happens, uh, when I do that, and that should be a command uh, click for the uh, Mac users. Uh, ignore the warning, just click on OK to accept that. Again, click on the top, so you're just repeating these steps over and over again. And with that selected, go to Generative Fill again. So I'm going to go at the very top and fill that in with Oil Painting and click on Generate. Now, again, this takes a few seconds, but you'll notice that when it generates this, it's going to be less ab abstract. And, um, and there's a reason why I'm dropping that from 50 down to 30. This will make more sense a few minutes later. So now let's take a look at the three. There's that result, there's that result, and that result. And again, very subjective. Pick what you like the best. Um, I'll just pick this one and uh, just to save time. I'm not going to overanalyze things. And I'm going to repeat this again. So I'm going to 
Hit the eyeball to hide that, select that layer again, and repeat the process I just did. So again, I'm going to select this, come over to my color picker again, click on this to open that up. I'm going to choose 15%. Click on OK. To fill in that again, I'm just doing Alt-Delete. That'd be Option-Delete on a Mac. And then again, I'm going to do Control-Click on this, which again, I'll get the warning. That should be Command-Click on a Mac. I got it right that time. Just click on OK to accept this. Click on the very top channel, and then just run Generative Fill again. So I'm going to go over here at the very top, paste in oil painting or manually type it in, and click on Generate. And you'll see that um, it becomes far less ab abstract versus the 50 versus the 30. So 15% will give me a slight different result. And then you're going to pick which is the best of the three choices. So I'm going to let that render out. And again, it just takes a few seconds. And then uh, that one's not bad. That one's not bad. This and that one. I sort of. Well, again, this is all personal preference, right? There's no right or wrong. And there's just pick what you think is the best. OK, so here's why I did three. And I want you to consider doing two or three different attempts at different percentages. I'm going to reactivate all of these at, at uh, above there. And I'm going to go to the very first one and just consider doing this. Consider choosing a blending mode. So I'm going to go to a blending mode and just play uh, with different ones like soft light. I'm going to use soft light here. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be soft light. You determine what you personally like because what I like doesn't mean you're going to like it. Okay, so again, focus on the technique and strategies of this. You decide on what you want to do in terms of blending motion or blending techniques. And how about pulling down the opacity a bit? So maybe I'll drop this to... I don't know, I'm just playing with this. Um, maybe, yeah, 50%. So there's a before, after, before, after. So with blending and 50%, I'm going to come down to this one, and you could play with blending modes on the next one. And then, again, play at opacity. Now, maybe I'm not going to, I'm just going to pull the opacity down instead of using a blending mode to come up with something like this. And again, it's personal taste. And then maybe come down to this one and do the same thing. So in other words, just understand the concept. You play with these three layers, or if you just did two, two layers, play with blending modes, opacity, to get the look that you want. Now, here's a way of finishing this. Go to your very top layer in your stack. Let's do a visible stamp layer. Now, if you remember how to do that, I did a video months ago. Shift, Control, Alt, E like in Edward to do a visible stamp layer at the very top. It consolidates everything to one layer. So that should be Shift, Command, Option on a Mac. Shift, Command, Option, and E like in Edward to get your visible stamp layer. Now that you have that, you can do any kind of cleanup work on the image that maybe you don't like certain things that came out a certain way, like... Um, uh, maybe down here, I'm just, you know, just playing here. Maybe I don't like that there. So maybe grab my, um, I don't know, spot healing brush and just, I don't like that line or something like that. Just, and again, it's, you know, you just go through this. Maybe I don't like this over here. So I'm going to get rid of that. That bothers me a little bit. Um, again, you're just fine tuning this. I, I don't want to waste time um, doing all this stuff, but you take the time, zoom in and navigate around and just do any touch up work if anything is needed. Now, if you're not going to print this, I'm going to share an extra step for you. But if you are going to print this, I highly recommend when it comes to printing and professional printers that you print on what they call fine art textured papers. There are many of them out there. Um, I think in the future, I'm going to talk about printing, not how to print but why you should print, because printing will make you a better photographer, and I'll prove that to you. So I'm going to do that as a topic. But we need to talk about uh, why you should print and what you should print to help you out. doesn't mean you have to go out and buy a printer to print. And if you did, there are um, plenty of training videos out there on how to do your settings and stuff on printing, and that's a, a different topic by itself. But let's say you're just going to showcase this on social media. So an extra step, and again, this is optional, is you're on the visible stamp layer. 
go to filter drop down menu. Now you might want to make this into a smart object layer if you wish. I'll leave that up to you. And that would be to right mouse click on this and choose to convert to smart object layer. And if I did that, come down here, you go, here we go, about three, say two thirds of the way down, convert to smart object layer. If you do a right mouse click on the thumbnail, you're not going to see that option. You have to be on the gray area of the layer to convert that to smart object layer. And you'll see the little symbol right there that represents that that is a smart object layer. The reason I'm doing this is if you go to filter and choose filter gallery and go to this category here called artistic right here, expand that and come to an area called, oh, where are we at? There should be, oh, I'm sorry, not artistic. Let me Sorry about that. Close that. You go to an area called Texture. And over here, you'll see Texturizer. Okay, click on that and make sure that this is set to Canvas in the drop down. You'll see different settings. I'm just going to make sure it's on Canvas. And scale this based on, again, this is going to be based on the resolution of your image and stuff, but you can see what it's doing. And the relief here, I'm going to over exaggerate that so we can see this. So in this example, I might go this far. I'm going to push this all the way. And the reason I tend to um, push things um, further when I do videos, because I've learned that um, sometimes subtle changes that look really awesome on your um, on your monitor doesn't quite show up too well uh, when it's created as a video. And then when I upload to this video to uh, YouTube, YouTube actually um, optimizes uh, these you know, videos down a bit and you tend to lose that. So sometimes I push things uh, too far, uh, but it's for demo purposes. Okay. And then make sure that light is your option. You can say top left. You can see how that changes the look of that. Uh, again, very subjective, uh, top right. Uh, and then just from top, I'm just going to choose like the lights coming from the top right there and just, just choose okay on that. And you can see how this added some texture like this was actually, you know, paint, uh, actually uh, was done on canvas right there. So I think it's a really cool technique, uh, oil painting using the gender of fill feature that we have built into Photoshop. Uh, try it on your image. This works with everything. I mean, I, I've done this with portraits. I've been playing around with landscape stuff and I'm not a landscape photographer, but I'm just was curious how this works with landscape. And it seems like everything works. So if you want something to have that oil painting look, I think this is really, really a cool technique. So again, hopefully you learned something uh, on this video. Again, just to reiterate, uh, re reiterate, just as a recap, and that is um, please like the video, subscribe if you have not subscribed, hit the notification bell. That way you'll get notified on the next video. Again, email me. My email address should be right here. It's also in the show notes uh, for you guys that you could highlight and copy and uh, email me and suggestions uh, or if you have any questions on anything. And then the last thing is a quick reminder to help support this channel. If this has been helpful, consider going to buymeacoffee.com. Uh, forward slash Stephen Photo Artist and uh, make a donation to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the ones that have done that in the past. So with that out of the way, again, get that camera out. Let's think creatively, literally out of the box and try this technique. Till next time, see ya!